Hey Agman, this is Darktangle78 here, uh, making a reply to your video, tag this. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank you for, for the mention, and uh, also thank you for giving me an excuse to make a video. I haven't uh, made a, um, a post in a little while, and uh, this is a perfect opportunity. You raise a couple of interesting questions. Um, you mention, um, why, why acquiesce? Uh, to the the tag argument, um, and I guess the, the 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 immediate thought is why rebut any argument? Why why counter any argument? And I think the answer is because truth matters. When somebody's making an argument, they're making a truth claim, and if you uh, see an error in logic, or um, any other flaw in reasoning, it's your, um, well, at least I, I feel it's, uh, I have a sort of sense of, um, of obligation to point it out. At least if I really think that the person um, has, a, uh, has an honest uh, uh, intention of finding out what, what the truth is. And um, at, at also if I think other people are taking him seriously. If I think people are going to take his conclusions seriously, uh, I think it matters to point out if there's a logical fallacy. Now, I don't want it to sound like I think I am the owner of the truth with a capital T, but I can say that um, if there is a logical error in the in in an argument, then I know that the conclusion does not follow, and um, I can at least uh, feel. Uh, uh, that if I point that out, then I'm helping anybody else that's looking at the argument in abstract and uh, not coming to a wrongful or unwarranted, I should rather say, conclusion. The conclusion may in fact be true, but at the least the argument doesn't warrant it. Um, and secondly, uh, I, uh, we could give people uh, uh, like Matt Slake the benefit of the doubt. I don't know if he really believes the conclusion that he is coming to, or at least I don't know if he believes that his argument is valid. But uh, all things being equal, I guess I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, um, I can think of uh, times in the past where I've been wrong in a conclusion that I've come to, uh, mathematical or otherwise, and there was a flaw in my reasoning, and it took somebody else to come along and point it out and have me see, oh, you know, they're right, there is a, a, a hole in this argument and uh, I should no longer or uh, feel warranted in, in that conclusion. And if not for Matt Slick, then at least for people that are looking at that argument and thinking, huh, maybe there is something to it. Um, now, in general, uh, people, people are not... Uh, they're not logical machines in the sense that, um, also related to the why acquiesce um, question, uh, if, if people were perfectly logical, then uh, there wouldn't, first of all, there wouldn't be fallacious arguments in the first place, but there also wouldn't necessarily be any, any reason to, uh, to make arguments and counter arguments because um, any, any, anybody would be uh, would almost immediately notice a flaw in logic and they would just not accept the conclusion they would just say error misstep uh, and that's it so uh, I tend to believe that a dialogue of argument and counter argument is uh, is necessary in order to sort of distill what uh, the conclusions that we come to and so this part of the back and forth process, I think, is 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 warranted. And relating to that, the uh, surprising as it may be to hear, the the tag argument is valid. Now, with, bear with me here. What is what is an, a valid argument? And I, I don't. Uh, um, this is just in general for people that are that are listening um, to to keep in mind a valid argument is one in which if the premises are true the conclusion must follow so the the tag argument is valid if the premises that Matt Slick puts forth are true then the conclusions logically fo follow 
what I would contend in a reply to Matt Slick is that his premises are not true. Now, I don't want this to be a formal reply to Matt Slick's uh, tag argument because uh, I haven't read it in a while. I don't have it present at mind uh, currently, so I don't feel that this would be a, a good representation of, of, of what a valid reply to his argument is. This is more uh, an, an answer to you, uh, Agman. Uh, and I think also theoretical bullshit's reply was very good, and I'll put a um, I'll put a link to to his reply if I can find it in the comment section of this video. Um, and the the but just just to comment because I think that this is something theoretical bullshit did not co comment on, and Matt Dillahunty didn't comment on either. And this is where I think the hole in the tag argument is to address your 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 second point. Um, well, I don't know if you raised if you if you wanted to know my opinion on why tag is wrong, but I'll, I'll put it out there anyway. So, essentially, tag says that um, the only way for abstract things um, uh, uh, for things to exist is either if they're material or they're abstract. And if they're abstract, they can only exist as the product of a mind, and therefore that mind. Since the laws of logic do exist and they're not material, they are abstract. Then that um, that medium in which they exist must be a mind, and that mind is God's mind. I think that kind of sums up the argument. Now, the the reason uh, I think this these premises are are not true, and therefore make making the argument unsound, if valid, they are unsound, is that I think there is there are other options to existence. In the very least, one, and that is phenomenological existence. So things can either exist as material things properly, as abstract things in somebody else's in somebody's mind, or as just phenomena of reality. So I think that's the way uh, that logical laws exist. We give them a label, but they only exist in the way that they manifest in reality. They are, epi they are f phenomena of reality. They are the way that reality manifests. And I think theoretical bullshit uh, mentions this in his video, but he, I think he just didn't give it the name phenomenological, um, which I, um, I think would be just a very short answer um, in the back and forth that uh, Matt Dillahunty and Matt Slick get in, where, where Matt keeps pressing him on, well, if they're, if they're not abstract and they're not uh, material, then what are they? You have to tell me. You have to tell me. And if Matt had just said they're well, they're just phenomenological, uh, then that would have been it, I think, at least. Okay, so I, I hope that um, kind of answers your question. Um, uh, in short, I guess, why acquiesce, why rebut? Well, one, give Matt Slick the benefit of the doubt, even though uh, I know you might think he doesn't deserve it, uh, maybe I do as well. I don't know, really. I haven't made up my mind as to as to that. But at the very least, for the 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 bystanders, the people that are looking um, uh, to the back and forth, if there is a reasonable response to an argument, which is um, at least has some semblance of coherence, uh, then it should be made. Now, this is this shouldn't be taken to the extreme, in the sense that there are people that are clearly insane out there and you shouldn't um, you shouldn't uh, go around addressing everybody's insane claim but if something has the semblance of a coherent argument and you do have a, a proper rebuttal to it then why not uh, why not make it All right hope that uh, hope that addresses things uh, Agman and thanks again for the for the shout out